Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmore here on this late Tuesday afternoon. Back at you once again with another video right here on the Peter fucking Gilmore channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Gilmore. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like the video. Hit that subscribe button. Down here, dude! In my pants. Otherwise known as the description box on this channel or on my other channels down there. So... And as always, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, share the video all over the internet, and don't forget to tap, slap, and beat that bell to death, treat it like it's your bitch, and turn on all notifications so you never, ever, 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 ever miss an upload. That's all you gotta do. So, do it now. So like the video, share the video, hit that bell, hopefully you'll get notified, if not, then unsubscribe, resubscribe, hit the bell again, and hopefully Susan and her team of monkeys will uh, send my videos out to you. If not, just search my search my name, and maybe you'll, maybe you'll um, get it, but or you can watch it, but it is what it is. Also, don't forget to like the video, smash it, like, like button to death, stick it up, you know who's... Stick up all those trolls' fucking asses. Because they know they're obsessed with me. But it is what it is. And subscribe to my channels and follow me on social media. And that's it. And if it's your first time watching, welcome to the party, pal! And I hope you enjoy the ride. And I hope you enjoy all the great food that the prophecy can give you. And that's all I can say about that. Because you won't get it anywhere else. You won't get all the greatest news, rumors, and all that other good shit. Best reviews and all that all that good stuff that the prophecy can give you. And that's all I gotta say about that. Alright, like I said, on this beautiful, nice, sunny, still a little bit warm and a little bit humid, less humid as yesterday, but still around 80, 81 degrees today. And here in the Northeast, on this beautiful Tuesday evening, June the 14th, 2022. Tomorrow will be the official midpoint of the year. And got six, six, a little over six months to go. Till the end of the year 2022 when we go to 2023. And for some of you, you wish this year was over, but <laughs> you got six months. But it is what it is. So. I hope you had a great day, a great Tuesday, and, um, that's all that matters. I had a pretty damn good day, and, um, that's, um, all that matters, you know. Just gonna, just enjoy myself, had a pretty good day, you know, worked and did a couple things, um, after work, I had to do some chores in the house, I had to, went out for a little bit of a run, gotta get my exercise in, so I had to do that, and we're getting ready uh, for the Mets to come up in about an hour from now. Mets are back at home against the Milwaukee Brewer Brewers, or as we say, Milwaukee, which means the good land. If you follow Wayne's World. But, yeah, so Milwaukee comes in to City Field for a three-game series with the Mets, who have 40 wins, best record in the National League. Five and a half games up on JD's Braves, so getting a little dicey, but I'm not worried about it because right. I mean, because right now, um, right now the Mets have um, I think they the, the fourth easiest schedule right now through the rest of the season. It's pretty easy. There's some hard games and you know coming up with Houston and then the Yankees coming up in July. You know, we still got to face the JD's Braves and the Phillies and, you know, the, all the other teams in our division, which we basically own right now, unless we collapse, but hopefully that won't happen. Even with, even with the freaking Braves possibly going on a 12, 13, 14 game winning streak, I mean, eventually they're going to fall like the, like the Phillies did. They went nine in a row and they lost on, um, su on Sunday to the Arizona douchebags, I mean, Diamondbacks, so... So we'll see what happens with that. Mets are on a nice two-game winning, uh, no, one, one, well, one-game winning streak because they won Sunday. They, I forgot they lost on Saturday, but it is what it is. So we got Chris Bassett on the mound pitching tonight. We'll see what happens. Hopefully he can 
right the ship over the last two starts his ERA is higher than my mortgage. So we need a big gutsy performance tonight from the Basset Hound, and um, let's see what happens uh, with that, and hopefully we get some more runs um, tonight. We had seven on um, Sunday, so, but we're playing a shitty Angels team, but it is what it is, and that's, and that's uh, pretty much it. So we got three games with the Brewers tonight, Wednesday and Thursday, and then those Marlins come in for the weekend, and they're always pesky, so hopefully we can... um. I would love to take two or three from the Brewers and then sweep the Marlins or take two or three. So we have a nice little home stand, home stand excuse me, before we go to Houston next week for two games. I don't know why it's two games, but okay, I'll take two. Because it doesn't matter. We can split with, with Houston. It'll be fine. And then I think we go to, I think um they go to Texas um, the week, uh, the next weekend. So that should be fun. A little Texas two-step, if you will. If you will. That's pretty much it. So we'll see how the Mets do, and that's pretty much it for that. That's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this late on this uh late Tuesday afternoon, we got NXT 2.0 coming up at eight o'clock. But it's taped. Unless you, I mean, if you read the spoilers, you don't have to watch it. But well, if you want to watch it anyway, that's fine by me. But but yeah, NXT 2.0 tape this week and next week. But that's it. It's not going to be live until two weeks from tonight, June the 28th, for the Go Home show before, excuse me, before July 5th's uh, Great American Bash event on the USA Network. So we shall ha see what happens with that and move on. But as the title below says, we got some updates about Jeff Harvey, dude. Jeff Hardy, dude! Now, if you were following along yesterday, big day yesterday, everybody was doing videos about Jeff Hardy uh, getting arrested for DUI again. His third third DUI in the past, like I think, 10 months or 10 years, or whatever it was. Um, he got arrested, um, and then he, um, he made Bond... So he doesn't. He didn't have to go. He was supposed to go to court today, a few hours ago, but he posted bond. Didn't have to go to the court where he, he could have been going to jail for up to up to about five years, or possibly get probation. Maybe go to a substance abuse clinic, get some treatment and all that shit, and possibly have his license revoked or suspended even further, possibly up to ten years. So, and really, AEW didn't say anything until today. And this is the update for you guys. And this is all coming from Ringside News. So I, I didn't mean I didn't I haven't put it in yesterday, but I will put it in today. I promise I will put it in today. But you can just look it up on Ringside News anyway. So, and um, that's pretty much it. All right. So here's the update. Uh, per Per um, rest, uh, Wrestling Inc. I'm oh, not sorry. RingsideNews.com. And I quote. Uh, Jeff Hardy has been suspended without pay. For his. Uh, eight, uh, from the, Suspended without pay from AEW and Tony Khan. After his DUI arrest. But there's more. There's much more. And I'll get to all that as much as I can within my time limit. But anyway, let's get to the, um, the the original story. AEW owner Tony Khan finally responded to the news about Jeff Hardy getting uh, arrested and with the DUI. And the video was just, oh my god. The video that, that came out um, with the cops stopping him and everything on the highway. Three cops fucking pointing guns at him because five people, five, well... I, I would say good Samaritans, but, I mean, but three cops with guns? The video is just freaking shocking in itself. It's just sad to see it, but crazy. I mean, just go on Twitter or go on, um, you, I think YouTube might have it, actually, but it is just crazy how they just come out of the car and like, get out of the car, get out of the car. 
I mean, they surrounded his car. But in any event, minus, minus that situation, uh, Tony Khan announced via Twitter, via his Twitter machine, that Jeff Hardy has been suspended from all elite wrestling without pay. Uh, who called that? This guy. So, I'm also chomping myself on that one. Um, all right, so he got suspended without pay. So, suspension indefinitely. They don't have a time frame at the moment, but we're getting to that. Uh, Tony has been in contact with Jeff and informed him that the company will assist him in getting treatment for his substance abuse issues. Now, AEW wanted to wait to hand out what they were going to give him. So, they wanted to wait a while, wait before doing anything, and they talked to Jeff, and they said, Hey, Jeff, well, we're going to help you get better, but right now, you're suspended without pay. And Tony was this close to firing him. I'm surprised he didn't, but I guess he wants to get, get him help before, you know, something, you know, this happens again, then you're gone. So, give me like a last, uh, one strike, you're out thing. Or two strikes you're out. I don't know, maybe. Whatever it is. So I got things. Some uh, ice chips in my mouth. Because my mouth's still kind of sore. That's what she said. Alright, so this is what Tony said. We were able to resume contact with Jeff Hardy this afternoon. AEW does not condone Jeff's alleged behavior. We've made it clear to Jeff that we'll assist him in getting treatment for substance abuse issues. Which he has indicated that he's open to receiving. That's good. In the interim, he is suspended without pay, and he can only return to AEW upon successfully completing treatment and maintaining his sobriety. Now, I don't know how long the treatment is going to be. Maybe a month, maybe two months at most, but we'll see. I don't know how certain treatment facilities or... It's almost like rehab, if you think about it, but... I don't know, how, like I said, I, this is just treatment. It's not rehab, it's treatment. Substance abuse treatment, I guess it's called. So, I would think it's at, mo at most a month. Maybe two months at most. But, Jeff's willing to get help. So, that's the good news. You know, he knows he fucked up. But, I mean, how many times you're gonna fuck up? It's like, oh, I'm gonna go get help. I I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really gonna go get help. And then, you go get help. You're sober for, like, a couple months. And then, next thing you know, you're back on the bottle. And then... Get back in jail. You need fucking help, Jeff. I'm serious. You need help. Take this time to go to the treatment. Get help. Find Jesus. Because your fucking brother and that fucking bitch wife of his don't give two shits about you. It is what it is. Um, I'm, talk I'm saying this as a fan. I'm a wrestling fan and a fan of yours, Jeff. I've been a fan of yours since the Brew days. And the Doc Hendricks days, remember that? I followed the, the Hardys throughout the, the late 90s, the, the mid to late 90s in the Attitude Era, where they were just great, great matches with the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. You know, that basically made the Attitude Era and partly the... part, A little bit of the uh, Ruthless Aggression Era. And then Jeff went to, went to TNA, he made a pretty good jump in TNA until 2011 at Victory Road, when he fucked up. And he showed up at Victory Road drunk and fucked up against Sting. Sting beat him in like five seconds. And that, that was, I think, well, up to now, the worst day of Jeff Hardy's career. And really put a blemish on TNA. Even though Hogan was there around that time. So. But it is what it is. And then, you know, and, Jeff, and then Jeff went, you know, Jeff was like in and out of TNA. They came, they came back to WWE with Matt for that infamous run back at WrestleMania 33, I believe it was. 33 or 30. No, I think it was 33. When they won the, they, they uh, won that ladder match to win the Raw Tag Team titles, and then they lost it. And then Jeff was in and out of uh, more DUI shit. And then um, they kind of broke up, and then... Then he was injured for a while, more DUIs and shit like that. 
And then Matt Hardy got released. He went to AEW. And where is he now? You know, really not doing much. He, he, was, he came in as broken Matt Hardy. Teamed up with... Uh, with the well, Cody's version of the Elite before Adam Cole got there and everything had that same Stampede match. We all remember that. The different versions of Matt Hardy and everything. Then he had the feud with Hangman Adam Page. Then he formed the uh, Hardy Family Office with Private Party and the Butcher and the Blade and the Bunny, which then became the Andrade Family Order, Hardy Family Order. Now it's basically the Andrade Family Order because now that. That um, after Matt Hardy changed changed around, and Jeff came in, they reformed the Hardy Boys. They were doing some good things. Had a great match at Double Nothing against the Bucks. Everything seemed fine, and then this shit comes around, and they were supposed to have a match tomorrow night ladder match for the AEW Tag Team Titles with Jurassic Express and the Bucks. And I think the Hardys were supposed to win that match possibly, but now that match has been canceled. But now it is being is re is being um I think it's being redone actually. I'll get to that in a minute. But that's that's the main story. Like Jeff has been suspended indefinitely. Uh, but um until um the only and the only way he can come back um is successfully completing treatment and maintaining sobriety, I would assume for a couple months. I would just suspend it for the rest of the year. That's what I would do. I would. I originally said thirty days, so that might happen. I don't know, because I don't. Like I said, I don't know how long this treatment's gonna last and how long he's gonna be sober. He can finish treatment great, and then maybe take another month or two or three off. He's completely sober for three months, and then it's like, and then Tony's like, all right. We'll bring you back. We'll do it. We'll do the match. Maybe at all uh, at um all out, or maybe go further than that and go to uh, full gear. Hopefully by then, by between now and November, he will be so we fully sober. You don't have to hear another DUI. But if Jeff wants to get better and he wants to fix his fucking life, then get the treatment, get sober, stay away from the fucking bottle and the pills. I mean, and if you're going to be performing an acoustic show somewhere and you start drinking and everything, please, for the love of God, have somebody call you an Uber or drive you home. Do not get behind the wheel. And the stupid car didn't have that interlock thing where you're like, oh, you're, you're drunk. You can't drive. And why were you driving with a suspended license anyway? That makes no sense to me. That makes no sense, but I'm glad he's getting the help he needs. He knows he needs the help, but it, you know it, it's hard to it's hard to break addictions and everything. It's hard to break uh, alcohol addiction or substance abuse addiction. It's very hard to kick drugs and alcohol. You know, very hard. I mean, we've seen celebrities do it. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne has been known for doing drugs and alcohol from from the seventies up to now. Um, I think he's a uh, seven or eight years sober because he kind of relapsed. I mean, Kelly Osbourne has rel um, was sober for a few years and then she relapsed. I think last year, but now she's back on sobriety. She's about to have a kid in a few months. That's great with you know Sid from Slipknot. You lucky bastard. <laughs> That's my bitch. I digress. Um, so we got that. Um, Jack Osbourne has been. Sober for 14 years. That's great. He looks great. Not, you know. So, he knows all about drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. He did, he uh, almost overdosed on Oxycontin at one point. Same thing with Ozzy. Ozzy almost overdosed a few times on him. Drugs and shit. But, it is what it is. But, I mean, but you can't break alcoholism... You can't really do it. I mean, you all you see all these rock stars who do do drugs and shit. I mean, Nikki Six, prime example. He couldn't quit, you know, shooting up heroin and everything, and then he shot up. He shot up one day, and then basically, clinically died, and then the adrenaline got pumped into his chest, and he came back to life. 
And then he, he, he fucking injected again. He woke up after passing out. He was like, I can't stop. I can't stop. And then eventually, he did stop, and he's been so weird ever since. So, it is not that too. I mean, Bobby Dahl from Poison. We all remember, if you watched um, the biography or the Beyond the Music, when Bobby Dahl was just fucking off his rocker at times on stage. He would, get, he would just, like, drink, 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 drink. And that one, there was one concert, he got plastered drunk. He couldn't even stand on stage playing bass. Freaking, freaking roadie guy, uh, his guitar attack, and a roadie had to basically pick him up. Same thing with uh, C.C. DeVille, too. They were so fucked up on drugs and alcohol that, you know, God forbid they, they would have died, but Bobby Dahl, you know, he's clean and sober as far as I know. I mean, a few, like, there's, there's been times that he's, he kind of went back on the bottle, and he had him and C.C. and Brett had fights on stage. But eventually, you know, they got better, and then they're doing pretty damn good. CC at one point got up to 250 pounds at one point early in the early 90s. Nobody recognized him. I was like, who the fuck is that? But CC DeVille was like, I'm fat. But thankfully, you know, he got off the drugs, and he said to himself, you know, like, oh, why am I here? What am I supposed to be here for? Why did God put me on this earth to do? I'm going to play the fastest rock and roll you could. You know, CeCe's been, like, up and down for, like, the last 20 years. But thankfully, he's doing much better. Bobby Dahl the same way. Ricky Rockin' and, and um, Brett Michaels. But really, I'm, I'm glad Brett, uh, Jeff is getting the help he needs. And hopefully, he can stay sober for a few years. And we don't have to hear another fucking DUI. But that's um pretty much it. All right, let me see. Uh, there's some um, updates to some things here. About Jeff. All right. Now, the, now I said the match tomorrow night, the Triple Threat ladder match was canceled. But now AEW has announced a new match for um for Road Rager two tomorrow. Uh, Tony Khan announced that Hardy is now suspended. That means he can't be in the match. To make up for it, AEW took the Hardys out of the match completely, and now the Young Bucks and Jurassic Express will battle alone in a ladder and just a Regular tag team ladder match for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. Uh, who call that too? I call that. So there you go. I would have put FTR in there, but I'm not the Booker. I'm not Tony Khan. But should be still be still gonna be a great match. I would I would hope the Bucks win. But knowing knowing um, AEW logic and wrestling logic, I think Jurassic Express will retain. Well, what I would do is give it to the Bucks. And then wait till, I guess, wait maybe till Jeff gets better. And then whenever that might be, it might be up till All Out. Might be past All Out. And then do the match, do a rematch from Double or Nothing. And put that in a ladder match. Bucks versus the Hardys in a ladder match for the AEW Tag Team Titles. Like a rematch from Ring of Honor. Um, I think it was the Best of the World when they did that ladder match. It's like a few years, a couple years ago. So why don't you just relive that? Like a rematch where the where the Hardys won against the Bucks. So it kind of be like deja vu. So, but I don't know. I will have to see what happens tomorrow night. What um Tony and Tony has planned for the um that match. If the Bucks win, you know they'll probably go on a nice long run. And um we we'll have to see what Adam Colbebe does because I think he's gonna be in that. That match with um Paige. Well, Paige is supposed to fight Okada. It was supposed to be for the IWGP belt, but now uh, that Jay White won the belt at Dominion this past weekend. I don't know if it's going to be now uh, Paige versus Jay White, and then possibly Adam Cole, baby, for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Or it just might just be Paige versus Okada, and then Jay White really doesn't have a, an opponent, or he just there is no opponent. And Adam Cole, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm thinking they're leaning towards that triple threat match with Paige versus Cole versus Jay White. Because Jay White, that promo he cut was just epic. He like ripped Adam Page a new asshole. And I'm wearing the shirt, by the way, you know. So I still, I still will, will support Adam Page and everything, but it is what it is. And that's um, pretty much it for that. So that's the update. So the match is now a tag team match 
The Bucks versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry and Luchasaurus fight a match for the AEW Tag Team titles tomorrow night. And that's pretty much it. Um, let's see here. Uh, there is some, some more stuff. Um, yeah, Tony, um, there's a story, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Tony Khan considered firing Jeff after his arrest, but talking to Jeff, I think, like I said, I think it's like, like your final chance, like you do it again, you're fired from AEW, and I guess all of wrestling at this point, I don't know, I mean, where would he go, I can't go back to Vince, I don't think Vince would want him at this point if he does that shit again, um, Um, so basically, he said, I knew, I, I think when this news first came out, there were not cooler heads, and then, and then cooler heads prevailed, and then Tony decided, okay, well, you know, this is my idea, but obviously, you gotta run, run it by Jeff, you know, are you willing to consider rehab? Because I think if Jeff said, Jeff said no, then I just fire him. I mean, I don't know that for sure, but it seems to be uh, the discuss. And this is coming from, this is coming from Meltzer? Um, no, Brian Alvarez, another idiot. <laughs> but... It is what it is. So, Jeff, you're very lucky to ha still have a, technically still have a job. But now you're not getting paid. And you can't come back until you finish rehab. So, that's that. Uh, uh, AEW was called out for having some blame for Jeff Hardy's arrest. Uh, Rebby Hardy's getting blamed for a social media tweet she put up. And what else is new with her? She can't shut her mouth because she's from New York. She's from Brooklyn, by the way, I think, too. Both from the Bronx. She's Puerto Rican, so really, they can't close their mouths. They can't close their legs, either. Which we all know Rebby Hardy can't close her legs, so... It is what it is. But, yeah, Matt and Jeff... Um, well, really, Matt, Rebby, and partly AEW are being just blasted by fans. Um, for not doing anything. And also, Jeff Hardy got is has been pulled from an indie event too. Um, pro wrestling company The L took to their Facebook page and officially announced that Jeff Hardy has been pulled from an upcoming event. We would have seen the Hardys take on the Carnage Crew on July the 9th. So, you have tickets to see the Hardys? Well, you might as well give them back. But that's basically it for that. Um, but really, uh, yeah, and then it's the police video is just, ugh. It, it is just hard to watch. That that video is just very, very, very hard to watch. But it is what it is. Matt Hardy did come out with a statement, said, I'm sticking by my brother. Uh, he says, was disheartening to hear the news about my brother yesterday. Recovery isn't a linear process, and I'll continue doing whatever I can to help my brother be healthy. Being healthy and well is the most important thing for Jeff, his wife, his children, and our family at this time. So kind of like, eh, you know. No, why weren't you there before? You know, but at least he's there now for his brother, I guess Rebby as well, because, you know, that's his, that's her brother-in-law. Blah, blah, blah. Godfather to their kids, I assume. So, but, you know, sometimes Rebby says things online and people just say, Oh, Rebby, how do you? But it is what it is, and um, that's pretty much it. But, like I said, I'm going to end this video pretty quick, and um, that's that. So I want to get ready for NXT and everything else, uh, but long story short, for those of you who uh, probably going to watch this video later, Jeff Hardy has been suspended without pay, and he can't come back to AEW until he finishes treatment and gets uh, and um, gets sober. So it could be a month, two months, three months, maybe more than three, but I'm going to take it as one for now. But, like I said, I, there's no timetable, so it's kind of indefinitely until he finishes treatment and gets sober, which could take a month or two, maybe more than, I would say more than about a month or two, but, or maybe three at most, but we'll see. We'll see. If Jeff wants to get the help he wants, he says he wants it, then get it, 
I'm fully behind Jeff. I hope he gets better and we don't have to hear this shit again. So he doesn't... I hope we do, he gets better and we don't hear this shit again. And, gets, and it, it becomes a Tamerlan Six situation where he kills himself or he kills somebody. We don't want to hear that. We want Jeff to get better. You know? all Everybody did videos yesterday telling Jeff to get better except for all the people... I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, Otaku. I mean, can't you just let Jeff be? Why do you have to bash him for for this shit? Because you're an AEW mark, right? I mean, I love AEW to death too, but this situation is serious. I want Jeff to get better. I didn't bash him at all. I said, Jeff, what what are you doing? You're throwing away your career, and you're possibly going to throw away your life. You want that? You want to leave your wife and kids behind because you did something stupid? Like, drink, 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 drink? I mean, come on. Get fucking help. And he's doing that. But, you know, just people just are fucking stupid. Like Otaku, and he's freaking bashing Jeff Hardy for fucking up. So he fucks up. At least he atones, uh, made, you know, atoned for it. He's going to get help, and hopefully this hasn't happened again. But you need to do that video just to bash him. You just did it for fucking clout. Because that's what you are, clout chaser. But I'm not going to get into that. That's another story for another time. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And that's it. I'll see you guys later right here on the channel for my NXT review. So stay tuned later, probably around 11 o'clock, 11.15, somewhere around there, 11, 11.30 on the channel. So stay tuned. Hit that bell. To get reminded when I do the video. And that's pretty much it. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm Peter Gomez signing off. Peace! And rock on and rock on with your cock out! And if you're not down with that, well, fuck you, man! That's all I gotta say about that. Jeff, get get better. And hopefully we'll see you in the next couple months. Get better, my friend. See you later.